Hello everyone, my name is Milad Foshnud and I'm the current president of Phi Delta Epsilon Free Medical Chapter here at California Theta. And I'd like to welcome you to our second uh, Yale Fan Lecture. And this year we were planning to have uh, memory disorders and the split brain given by Dr. Ronald Lee Stahl from UCLA. However, due to a recent and unforeseen medical circumstance, he's unable to be with us tonight. But we were lucky to get Dr. Steven Soldinger, a psychiatrist of 30 years and current president of the American Psychiatric Association, to give his to give his lecture on the psychology of pain and pain medication addiction. So if you'll all join me in giving him a round of applause and welcome to the event. Thank you no, 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 no. You know, when someone said I was the president of the AMA, I, I'm neither one of those. I am the president-elect of the Southern California Psychiatric Society. I know, my fault. And I'm on the board of Phi Delta Epsilon Medical Fraternity. I am the immediate past president of Phi Delta Epsilon International Medical Fraternity, where I was president for about three and a half years. So that's what I'm doing at the moment. Besides, I teach at UCLA, Sepulveda VA Residence. That's a film media uh, psychopathology course for residents in psychiatry. And then I do these lectures for undergrads and med students, and sometimes for high school students when the need arises, especially at Cal State Northridge. This is where I studied when I was in high school. When I went to high school, I went to Grover Cleveland High School and I came to Cal State Northridge. Anybody else from Cleveland High School? Right. <laughs> like that. All right. Cleveland Cavaliers. All right. All right. So this lecture, when I gave it originally, well, my, my history with this, the psychological aspects of pain, started in uh, 1979 when I was a resident at UCLA. The then almost president of the APA asked me to write a chapter and a book for him, which I wrote 80% of. You know, it's really good if you're going to write something, if you have somebody who's like the president of an organization. When I write articles in that era, and even today, I have to rewrite, 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 rewrite. We don't like this, we don't like this. I think I took a microphone and just spoke it. And he typed it up just the way I spoke it, and they published it. It was the psychological aspects of pain in uh, uh, obstetrics and gynecology. It's in my resume. If you went online and looked at SanFernandoValleyPsychiatrist.com, you would see that chapter for that original book. I think it came out, I'm not exactly sure what, what year, 1980, 1981. And then I wrote another chapter, another friend of mine thought I should do more things about, and you know, I don't really like publishing papers or chapters or books, but it seems to come up whether you like it or not. So this was from the podiatrist, the surgeons, the podiatrist asked me in the North American uh, Treatment of Podiatric Medicine to write them a chapter, and I did the psychiatric psychological part of it, and my friend and other frater, Martin Quadro, did the medical anesthesiology part, and we wrote a chapter that came out a couple years ago in the North American Podiatric Clinic, North American Clinic of Podi Podiatric Medicine, and you can see that reference on San Fernando Valley Psychiatrist.com also if you want to. But you don't have to read it because I'm going to tell you the important parts from my perspective tonight. All right, so the psychological aspects of pain, I'm, I'm just going to try to jump right into it, and please stop me. I'm, I'm going to try not to be funny, because I know everyone says you're supposed to start with something humorous, but I end up being so humorous in my talks, I don't see any point in doing that. So I'm going to try to be, I'm going to try to have you not laughing as often as I can, but it just happens, I don't know why. I gave a lecture the other day, and I was talking to a bunch of students, and I think I was talking about lawyers, and I meant to say lawyers, and I said liars. Everybody started laughing, I couldn't get them to stop. But that, you know, my unconscious psyche works over time for me, so I don't have to worry about humor. Psychological aspects of pain is the name of our talk. Um, I guess as I get away from this, I'll try to look down here, but then I'm not looking at the slides, but I can see them down here. However, you may see me take my glasses off and not see you as well. Pain is an unpleasant perception, having a sensory and emotional experience. Pain, pain can be caused, pain also, pain can be caused by thermal, mechanical, polymodal insults to sensory nerves. Okay, and changes in nociceptive afferent fibers create pain. Now that's, that's getting a little technical, 
And what that means is that the people and principles of neuroscience, Kendall is the publisher of that book, have gone out of their way to actually identify the various neuron and neural receptor pathways, and I know you're all very impressed that those exist and that I knew what they were. But that really is not the psychiatric components of pain. But you have to start with the basic science whenever you're dealing with anything in medicine, and all of medicine has kind of the same kind of rigmarole, and you know, there's always a basic science. And so some of you may have already had some of this. You may have read principles of neuroscience, and so you'll know a little more in the beginning. But don't worry if you don't know, because that's not the basis of this particular talk. I'm going to get into mostly psychiatric treatments a little bit and talk a little bit about what we do. So blocking pain, aspirin, capsaicin, or vanilloid receptors. Substance of the P causes the heat, redness, and swelling. We have the gate control theory of pain, which is why acupuncture works. Direct electrical stimulation is similar to opium. So those are the experiments where we were able to trigger parts of the brain where we got a robust endorphin response, and that was similar to using opium. Again, this is just a medical background, okay? So, to show you what I think about that, where is it? There it is. Look at this acupunk, what is it? No, this doesn't work. This is supposed to be a red light, but the light doesn't come on. Can you see it? There it is. Look at this, acupuncture, aromatherapy, herbal tea. We could be dealing with a homeopathic killer. Okay, so that's my idea of humor. Because especially in pain, the biggest thing that we as doctors try to do is not kill the patients. So you have to try your best because there's a lot of drugs and a lot of treatments that are very dangerous for patients. You guys didn't find that funny, the podiatrists were laughing at that. All right, so opioids are from the Greek word for juice, morphine, named for Morpheus, the Greek god of dreams. These are the drugs for the surgeon, anesthesiologist, or the pain doctor, not for the psychiatrist. Psychiatric areas, this is where I get more comfortable. So we have psychotropic, can I take this out and take it with me? That'll make it a lot better than my voice changing for you guys all the time. There we go. So, uh, psychiatric areas are going to include psychotropic medications, psychiatric treatments, psychiatric liaison work, uh, uniting with the unit, the treatment plan, and the team. Psychiatric consultation, evaluation, and we also call it, I'm going to try this for, can everybody see it okay? Is that, can we need to focus it a little bit? Can someone focus it a little more? The, the slide, can you guys see it all right? Yeah. No, it's me then, never mind. Anyway, so for me it's a little blurred. So psychiatric consultation, evaluation, behavioral medicine, and addiction medicine. So these are all the areas that are the purview of the psychiatrist. We even have psychiatrists who are specialists in psychotropic medications, specialists in different psychiatric treatments. They might do, I mean, don't worry about these names, dialectic-based therapy, mentalization-based therapy. They might do cognitive behavioral therapy, hypnosis, guided imagery. We'll talk about some of these. And the psychiatric liaison is when you go into the medical unit and you're working in the hospital trying to mostly calm everyone else down, especially the patients, especially the nurses, and especially the doctors. So everybody kind of gets the idea we're all on the same team. And that's what that means. You're doing liaison work. And then you also have to do a psychiatric consultation evaluation. So you're evaluating the patient. You're evaluating the patient for things in the next slide so I won't get ahead of myself. And behavioral medicine is some of the things we mentioned, um, especially hypnosis and guided imagery, things like that. Um, what else do we do? We do biofeedback, which would be considered behavioral medicine treatment. Okay, and there's other things that are related to that. Addiction medicine is a very big thing right now. You have internists that subspecialize in addiction medicine and you have psychiatrists who specialize in addiction medicine. Just to make it confusing, what we do in California is we tell doctors, you must give these patients pain relief. Then we take away doctors' licenses if they prescribe too much pain medication. So it's very confusing. We kind of put people in this double line, and then we have these specialists called addictionologists, and they kind of help us get out of that bind one way or another, because we get a consult. The rule in, in medicine at all times is divide and conquer, you know, don't try to do it all by yourself. Don't be a cowboy, get a team. That way when they come after you, you've got a whole team to yell with you. 
You've got to remember that, especially in addiction, because you're dealing in pain with these very heavily addictive drugs a lot of times. You're giving people morphine, you're giving them opium, you're giving them things like that, Norco, Vicodin. You've heard of some of these names, right? Someone's heard of them? Okay, Dilaudid. Okay, and now more controversial, where do we use THC within this pain framework? So it gets into a lot of controversy. So you, even though they want you to treat everyone, they don't want you to give them too much, and they don't want you to give them too little, and they'll punish you for either one. It kind of gets confusing. So remember, you get a team behind you.